what up everybody it's your boy just brandon back with another great video and today i thought i'd do something a little bit different see i like a lot of you guys out there watch a lot of youtube videos and one of my favorite types of videos to watch on the platform happens to be gun collection videos so with that in mind i thought i'd switch things up a little bit give you guys kind of a peek behind the curtain and show you some of the things i'm working with this isn't my entire gun collection but i would say it's safe to say that it's about half of it so without further ado let's jump into this and show you guys what i'm working with all right up first we got the ruger ec9s chambered in nine millimeter this thing has a manual safety it has the trigger blade safety dingus thing and it also has a mag release safety um basically that means the gun will not fire unless the magazine is inserted it actually comes with a dummy magazine because you have to dry fire it in order to disassemble it. This was a staple of my carry rotation until very, very recently. As you can tell, it's a lot of holster wear on this thing. Um, it's a giant scratch on it as well. Uh, the finish is a blued finish and it didn't hold up to the repeated drawing and everything when it comes to the holster. So. This was replaced very recently with something that you'll see later in the video. Uh, it does have blacked out milled sights, non-adjustable. But I've never had a problem out of this gun. The finish kind of sucked, but it still got the job done. Uh, this is the Ruger EC9S. Sticking with Ruger's next up, we have the Ruger Security 9, obviously chambered in 9mm. This was made to be a similar size and weight to the Glock 19. It has a manual safety as well as the trigger safety. It has a swappable magazine release, both front and rear slide cocking serrations, and the Glock uh, U dot sights. This is not a striker fire handgun, this is actually an internally hammer fired gun uh, the manual safety works only if the gun is racked and this is actually just a slide stop it does not really function as a slide release same blued finish as the uh, EC9S but this one held up a lot better because this wasn't subjected to all the holster wear uh, it came with two 15 round mags and for the most part, man, I like it. Oh, full Picatinny rail. For the most part, I like this gun, man. I have no complaints out of it. Uh, it's a good little range toy. Ruger Security 9. Up next, we have the Ruger SR22. Honestly speaking, guys, this is my favorite gun that I own. Bar none. And I own a lot of guns. But this one happens to be my favorite. It has ambidextrous uh, trigger release. Ambidextrous safety slash decocker. And a slide stop that actually functions as a slide release. This has uh, three dot sights adjustable for both windage and elevation. And it is a double action, single action firearm. This thing has pretty much eaten ever I put through it and asked for seconds I barely ever clean this gun and for 22 it is the most reliable 22 that I've ever seen in my life I fed it everything from the crappiest ammo you can find all the way up to the expensive stuff and it's fed everything reliably uh, exchangeable grips rubberized grips although I didn't have to change them the one right out of the box fit my hand just fine as well as a Picatinny rail. The slide is stainless steel and is actually staked, but it is removable with a little bit of work. So my favorite gun out of everything I own, the Ruger SR22. I'm sorry, it came with two 10 round mags. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they don't make any extended mags for it, but I do have like four or five 10 round mags for this. My wife and kids both train on this and they love it. It's my favorite gun as well, the Ruger SR22. Next up, we have the Taurus Spectrum chambered in 380 ACP. Now, I have to admit that originally I did not want this gun. I actually went to go get a Glock 42 
And when I got to the gun store, the line for this thing was out the door. I didn't know what was so special about it, except for the fact that it came in like a thousand different colors. But for like $129 out the door, I thought, why not? If it's a good gun, then I got it for a great price. And if it's a bad gun, then I got it for a great price. So it's not really that big of a deal. Um, initially, I absolutely did not like this gun. I didn't like the uh, seven round extended magazine, nor did I like the uh, recoil spring. Putting the recoil spring back in is actually really, really difficult and frustrating to do. But uh, thanks to a couple of other YouTubers, I kind of figured out a good way to do it. And honestly speaking, after having this gun for a while and carrying it for a while, it actually worked its way into my summer rotation. It is extremely light and you can throw it in your pocket and completely forget about it. I wear it with basketball shorts or jogging pants all the time and it's light enough to where it's not pulling my pants down when I walk around. It comes with a six round magazine flush fitting as well as a seven round magazine that's extended that I never use because it sucks. Uh, just one way magazine release. I think it's swappable. It might be, but I don't know. I honestly don't care. Uh, a set of slide serrations or cocking serrations It has like this rubberized grip that you pretty much squeeze and that's what you use to rack the slide. I can do it either way. doesn't really matter. Again, milled front sights, but, and they're really, really low profile. But then again, you know, if you're going to pocket carry this thing, having large sights on your handgun, it's not really that big of a deal. This is a full double action only pistol. Like the full double action and double action only. Honestly speaking, it's kind of grown on me. Uh, I like it a lot more than I like to admit. This is the Taurus Spectrum. Keeping with Taurus is the next thing up is the Taurus TX-22. This was the hottest pistol in the world probably around this time last year. Uh, Taurus is direct blowback 22 LR. It came with uh, two 16 round magazines. And I think it came around, came out around the same time as the uh, Glock 44. And there was a lot of comparisons between this one and the Glock 44. And surprisingly, the Taurus came out on top of that comparison more often than not. Uh, ambidextrous manual safety, which I don't really care about. Uh, the slide release, the mag release, I should say, is not. Well, it is swappable for left-handed shooters uh two 16 round mags like i said it's a direct blowback and honestly speaking the only comp uh, full size handgun honestly three dot sights is striker fired and the only complaint i have about this gun is actually the magazines themselves they are a polymer magazine and they're really finicky about the way they're supposed to be loaded so actually the best way to load these magazines is to hold them upside down and take the pressure off the spring so that the bullets doesn't nosedive and you get a bunch of failure to feeds. So with that being said, I would never ever use this thing for other than, you know, a training tool or a plinker. This would never ever be a home defense or a concealed carry option because of the reliability issues. But you can get the magazines to work properly. This is a good little plinker. A good toy. Uh, Taurus definitely had a winner on their hands with this one. This is the uh, TX-22. Okay, next up is the Glock 43X, chambered in 9mm. This happens to be the only Glock I currently own right now. And this, I bought this originally to be the replacement for my Ruger EC9S. I was going to use this as my uh, carry gun. But about a week later, I bought something else, and this one has not seen the light of day. It's actually either been in its box or in my safe pretty much since the day I got it. Uh, forward and rear slide cocking serrations, uh, standard Glock mag release, standard Glock slide release. It, hold, it came with two 10-round magazines. 
And a lot of people had a lot of problems with that because the concealed carry market is trending towards smaller pistols with a larger capacity. So for Glock to come out with a concealed carry pistol to compete against the uh, Springfield Hellcats and the uh, SIG P365s and only come out with 10 rounds uh, was kind of a problem. But people seem to like this gun. I got the uh, the Gen 2 of it, which is the uh, black on black. For some reason, I really, really like all black pistols. Everything about it is standard. I haven't changed anything on it yet. Although I do have the uh, Shield Arms 15 round mags and a uh, factory Glock night sight on the way. So when those come, we'll swap those things out and I'll let you guys take a look at that. But for now, this is my Glock 43X. Okay, speaking of Springfields, next up we have the Springfield XDS chambered in nine millimeter. This was my first concealed carry gun and I carried it pretty much religiously. Everywhere I went, this thing was attached to my hip. Uh, chamber to 9mm, like I said, it has a dual, well, Ambi mag release. Um, fight came with fiber optic sights, both green and red. Loaded chamber indicator. Uh, it has a grip safety, as well as a trigger safety. It came with a 7 round and an 8 round magazine. I later picked up a 9 round magazine. The 7 round mag is flush fitting, the 8 and a 9 come with different back straps to make it uh, fit your palm swell a little bit better. And honestly speaking, man, I love this gun. The only complaint I have about it is that it's kind of heavy for a concealed carry gun, which is why I kind of grabbed the EC9S to carry with me because this thing actually has a little bit of weight on it, especially for a carry gun. So I absolutely love this gun. Other than that, I mean, the, the grip is a little bit, it is what it is, who cares? But I absolutely love it. This is my first carry gun. This is my baby. And for that reason and that reason only, I will probably never get rid of it. This is the Springfield XDS. Sticking with Springfields, next up we have the Springfield XD9. This is the service model. It's a 4-inch barrel. Uh, pretty much the same features as the SDS. Uh has a grip safety, ambidextrous mag release, flip it over, uh, same, everything on this gun is the same. Uh, it has two slots for Picatinny rail, and usually I have a light on this gun. This is my uh, bedside gun. This one's almost never unloaded. It's actually really weird to see it not being loaded now. Um, and this is, at home, this is always within arm's reach of me. This is uh, my buddy when I'm at home, the Springfield XD9. Last up for the handguns in today's video at least is my newest acquisition, my newest carry gun, the Springfield Hellcat. I did a full unboxing video on this video on this uh, firearm. If you want to check that out, uh, just search through the channel. It's probably one of the first one or two videos up there, but I absolutely love this gun. It came with two magazines, an 11 round and a 13 round, and they're pretty much roughly the same size. Uh, so I carry with the uh, 13 round mag, one in the chamber, as well as a spare 13 round mag. And surprisingly, there's not that much of a weight difference between carrying the 11 and the 13 round mag. So I, it's barely noticeable. This is the model that came with uh, night sights. There is an OSP model, which is a uh, optic sight picture. I guess that's what that stands for. And as well as one that um, has a fiber optic front sight. Uh, swappable mag release, which I'm not going to do. Uh, flat faced uh, bladed trigger. And... It actually compares very, very well to the Springfield XD and the XDS. I mean, it's the same uh, mode of operation. All of the controls are exactly the same. So that's very familiar to me being that I own three of them. So this is my current carry pistol right now, the Springfield Hellcat. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about some long guns here. This is my Springfield Saint. Chambered in 556 five, NATO uh, slash 223. Um, it's the standard entry level AR with the uh, Bravo Company enhancements, the nickel boron trigger, the six position telescoping sight, A2 flash hider, 
you know, some pretty standard stuff. I do have the Caldwell, the Caldwell bipod added on here, as well as the uh, Sightmark uh, red and green reticle. I'll do a review on the Sightmark one later, a little bit later. I kind of had some issues with it, still have some issues with it. But other than that, man, it's just your basic standard AR. Springfield kind of has a love-love relationship with me. I love buying their products, and they love to come out with new products after I bought one. So about a week or two after I picked this one up, they actually came out with the uh, free-floating uh, free handguard model, as well as the St. Edge, as well as the one where the handguard is M-Lock instead of key mod. It is actually very, very hard to find key mod accessories around here. But anyway, this is my first AR and I actually really like it. This is the uh, Springfield Saint Gen 1. All right, guys, I just noticed how long this video is starting to run, so we're gonna end it here. This is the last thing up on the list for today. This is my Mossberg Maverick 88. This is actually just a cheaper version of the Mossberg 500, and the reason I picked this one up over the Mossberg 500 was because it came with two different barrels, it came with the 18 and a half inch security barrel, which is what's on there now, as well as a 28 inch barrel for hunting. So this is actually mostly interchangeable with the Mossberg 500. Pretty much everything is interchangeable except the trigger group. And that's because of the safety. This one actually uses a cross bolt safety as opposed to the Tang safety, which is usually here on the Mossberg 500s and 590s. Hold six rounds in the two plus one in the chamber, giving it a total of seven rounds. And if you can't stop somebody with seven rounds of uh, bug shots or slugs, you have a problem. So this is it guys. This is my Mossberg Maverick 88, and that's gonna wrap up my gun collection video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.